Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the IREC meeting this morning. Um, I think we do have quorum. So at the outset, I think everybody, the materials were all pre-circulated. Can I, the first item on the agenda is to, is to approve the agenda. Can I get a motion? Any, anybody want to add anything to the agenda? Thank you, Steve. And no. so I, I guess we're, I'm the only other I'm the only other member of the committee. Then I'll second it and correct. Move on to number two. Are there any uh, declarations of conflict of interest? Okay, hearing none. I assume there will be none. Let's go first to the uh, the consent agenda. We have the the draft meeting minutes of the uh, open session of March the 11th, 2021, of our IREC meeting. Can I get a motion? Sorry, and let's do both of them. Yeah, let's have the a motion for to to approve that. Any any comments or questions? Hearing none, I'm going to take the minutes as adopted. So now we go to Leslie, please. Could we get an update um, on our? Oops, sorry. Jack, is there something? If I yeah, if I can uh, just interject for a second, I did want to update the board uh, just in terms of the arrival of the commissioner or, or half of our commissioner street bridge. Um, unfortunately, we can't have any uh, tours during this period of pandemic uh, shutdown, but I did want to make sure the board saw we finally received it a few weeks ago, uh, but it, it has been put in place now and Charmaine, I don't know if you can just share for the board um a picture it is uh, quite spectacular it is going to be the biggest longest bridge that we have it's only a half the other half is coming um in august but this is now in place uh right. and as i said that's only half the bridge uh that'll be crossing the river so i thought the board should at least be able to see what's been put in place my goodness so which half is that uh I think it's the west half. I can't remember oh, it is, exactly, it is but it's yeah. exquisite. Yeah, so uh, it, it will be uh, quite spectacular when we get the other half. So we will uh, again once we know we can do tours at some time, hopefully in the fall, we'll try to arrange uh, some, you know, basically some tours. Excellent. Well, thank you for that. All right, now I'll pass it back to uh, Leslie and group. So thank you, John. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, uh, so the development dashboard this quarter, um, we're showing some, you know, basic progress. I don't think COVID has slowed down our projects um, too too much. We've been very fortunate that um, construction has kept going. Um, today we're featuring um, the LPAT for our development da um, development project um, presentation, um, which will be done by Jed and Josh is along for questions as well. Um, I don't know whether there's anything specifically that I can bring to your attention. I think it's it's all moving quite well. Um, so if, um, if there aren't any questions, I'll pass this on to Jed Kilburn and Josh Hilbert for the presentation. Thank you, Josh and Jake. Hi, uh, Jed Kilburn. Uh, Charmaine, if you could go to um, page 14 of the of the book. Thank you. Um, so my name is Jed Kilborn. I'm the director of development planning um, and with me is Josh Hilbert um, who uh, Josh and I have been working um, quite quite closely on uh, the Portland's planning framework the the uh, local planning appeal tribunal um, hearing. And I just wanted to give you a quick overview and kind of an update about where the hearing was at. Um, Charmaine, if you could go to the next slide, please. Um, about a year ago, I kind of gave a, 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 an update to the board about <laughs> in advance of the hearing, um, gave uh, an update to the board about the Portland's planning framework. And um, it was it was a doc document that we worked with the city of Toronto on and um, it ended up being uh, adopted by council in uh, 2017. Um, and the, the planning framework is a pretty huge um, document that looks at planning throughout the, the rest of the Portlands um, with an idea of setting kind of the planning framework to establish 
kind of growth and change over the next 50 years. Um, in order to see that part realized, uh, or in order to see the uh, planning framework realized, um, there were about 250 policies uh, adopted meant to implement the planning framework. And, um, and that, that was the chunk that was adopted by Council. Um, but then uh, the, the policies of the OPM were appealed at the local planning area tribunal. Um, so Charmaine, if you could go to the next slide, please. Broadly speaking, um, the existing uses in the portlands prior to, and, and actually in many respects, this is what's currently uh, existing in the portlands. Um, there are a number of active port uses, which you can see on your screen in purple. In addition to um, a number of uh, parks and open spaces to the south of the, the portlands, uh, there are some identified heritage buildings, um, and then there's also, critically, there's also um, film and uh, film supporting uses, um, most notably, and here it's shown in orange in the center of your screen, uh, the Pinewood Studios Secure Perimeter. That's actually expanded a little bit, and I'll talk a little bit more about what the proposed land uses are as a result of the planning framework. And so this, this was what was on the ground when the planning framework started. Um, and I just wanted to, Charmaine, if you could go to the slide 17. And this is what the planning framework imagined to be part of the, um, the, the future of the Portlands. Um, and so you can see up in the, in the kind of northwest corner of, of, uh, of, the, of your screen is in red, that's Villiers Island. Um, and Villiers Island is currently what we're working on. You can see where the light green is, the com where the Commissioner's Street Bridge is actually now. Um, and, uh, and just to the east of that is some of the mixed use neighborhoods that, we're, that, we'll, that the Portland's planning framework imagines. Um, so McCleary District to the east, and then that kind of dark, um, darker red color is, uh, is the studio district. And so that's imagined to be uh, studios and studio supporting uses. And then the purple and light purple and dark purple are, um, are maintaining some of the industrial uses and some of the port uses, especially um, that, that had traditionally been associated with the, uh, the plant, with the portlands. Um, and I think critically, one of the big, big pieces is there's a lot of uh, kind of city serving infrastructure down here, most notably, um, some of the hy hydro stations and, uh, and, and hydro infrastructure that feeds the rest of the city. Uh, Charmaine, if you could go to the next slide, please. So those were, those were, that was the kind of land use direction that the Portland's planning framework had imagined bringing into force. Um, and, and, and the, there were about 17 parties that appealed those, uh, the policies brought into effect by the planning framework. Um, those 17 parties had a combined 300 issues um, that, were, that were submitted to be resolved as part of an LPAT pr process. Um, and the City of Toronto consolidated and distilled those into four distinct hearing phases and four different thematic groups. So the first was the land use and street network. So what we just saw on the previous slide, um, urban design, building heights and heritage, um, affordable housing, parks, community infrastructure and servicing, and then sustainability and biodiversity. Um, and in order to make this actually manageable for everyone involved, um, those four, um, uh, categories were each given their own hearings. So what ended up happening was, or the, the, the hearing was decided to be phased, and what ended up happening was phase one of the hearing um, had 70, 70 issues, and it was to deal with the land use and street network. Um, what Josh and I ended up working on um, was to, to make sure that Waterfront Toronto was supporting the city in the discussion um, and, and would have supported uh, the city as this went through the hearing process. If you could go to the next slide, please, Shemin. So in support of the, the hearing for land use, um, what we ended up 
uh, doing was having two experts from Waterfront Toronto, Chris Glacik, our chief design officer, and Don Forbes, who's the project director for soil remediation and earthworks as part of the flood protection project. Um, and the, the hearing to, to resolve this was um, was originally scheduled for January of this year. Um, but typically what ends up happening at the LPAT is there's a request from the LPAT to mediate. So if there's a possibility of finding resolution outside of the formal uh, tribunal procedure, um, uh, the LPAT really encourages all parties to do that. And so that's what we ended up doing um, in late October and early November of, of last year. So it was a pretty significant mediation period. It lasted 11 days with all of the all of the parties who had an issue, who had identified issues. Um, but significantly, and this is huge credit to the City of Toronto and our working relationship with them, uh, we ended up resolving all of the phase one issues with all of the parties. So that was a pretty significant win. Um, Charmaine, if you could go to the next slide, please. So instead of having a hearing in January, what ended up happening was uh, the hearing was turned into um, a, a settlement hearing, which basically was the way that the uh, LPAT ratified, for lack of a better word, the, the, the mediation process. Um, and the LPAT issued an order just this past May that brought the, the policies um, into, into force and effect with uh, leaving the policies in specific areas of the portlands as yet to be uh, resolved. Um, so one of the things one of the things that ended up happening, um, and you can see the the three areas in the gray are areas of the portlands that still have issues that are remaining to be um, be resolved, and those correspond with the with the last few um, categories of of uh, of thematic categories for the resolu uh, for the um, planning framework. Um, one of the things that we're looking at with the city is a way of consolidating those remaining issues um, to hopefully not have three more hearings um, or three more bits of mediation, but instead to have um, consolidate as much as possible into a fairly streamlined process. So finally, um, this is from the planning framework, and this is uh, just a, a, a plan view of what eventually would be imagined uh, after the 50 years of the planning framework. So with that, I'm happy to take questions. So thank you, Jed. Jed, who's representing, I mean, are, are, is Waterfront represented by council through all these proceedings? We are, absolutely. External who's, counselor. Who's, who's uh, Andrew, Big, Andrew Biggert. Um, he he's a municipal lawyer who's worked quite closely with the city in many respects, um, and and we've been working with him for the past two years. Great, and 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 so this covers the full. Uh, like, how big is the study area? About three hundred acres. It's every everything everything. The Portland's planning framework covered everything that you see in front of you right now, um, with different land use policies uh, depending on the different areas. Good, thank you. All right, anybody else have a question for Jed? Okay, hearing none. Well, thank you very much. Wonderful, thank you. Okay, um, and we have, I guess, the, the, is there an update on the Keyside matters? I'm not sure, yeah. is that Meg? Am I, yeah. I yes. Meg? That'll, yes, that'll be about it. Good morning. Thanks, Jack, everybody. and good morning, everybody. Um, just a brief update. Uh, we did close the RFQ on May the 28th, and um, we received 10 submissions. Uh, we have our evaluation committee hard at work evaluating the submissions right now, and um, we'll be reporting back um, once we finish those reviews. Well, that's thank you very much, Meg. Congratulations to the team. I think 10 is a is a great response to. Uh, yeah. We feel very comfortable with that. Yeah, definitely. Great. All right. Is there anything further for the public session before we before we go into into closed session? George. No, uh, we, we can do updates in the closed session. Thanks, though, Jack. Okay. Thank you. So, could I have a motion to go into closed session, please? Thank you, Steve. In, well, let's go into closed session. Charmaine, if you could turn off the camera, please. 
Thank you. We're, we're back in the public session. OK, so. Uh, we have a motion to adopt the minutes from the. Uh, March 11th meeting of IREC. It's up on the board for everyone to see and read. Uh, Stephen, can I have a motion from Stephen sure. seconded by Andrew? Uh, any questions or comments? Then I'll call the question. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? I declare that motion carried. Is there any other business? Hearing none, then I'm happy to uh, terminate the meeting. Can I get a motion, Stephen and Andrew? Right. Thank you. The motion, the meeting is terminated, everyone. Thank you very much.